Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. And uh, how exciting is it to be here talking about Crossbind? It's almost, it's almost five years of Crossbind. So I, I wanted to take the opportunity to kind of walk through where Crossbind is and, and where we're going with it. Uh, uh, I'll skip the what's about me, but you know, I'm the, I started one of the folks that started the Crossbind project. I also started the Rook project and I've been working on startups for a long time. Um, it's really hard to talk about Crossplane without talking about Kubernetes. Uh, so, so when we started the project five years ago, uh, companies were standardizing, started to start standardizing on Kubernetes, right? And, and they did that because they wanted a common way of running containers and container workloads, regardless of which environment they're running on and, um, and, and do it in a consistent way that makes their policies, that lets their team self-service, that essentially ties into the cloud native ecosystem, right? What's important is that not only was Kubernetes a way of a force for standardization, but how it did it was also interesting. And that's the basis of what we built Crossman on. So I wanna spend a little, a few minutes talking about that. At the heart of Kubernetes is this control plane. The control plane is the, the component of, of, of uh, Kubernetes that is running and managing everything in a Kubernetes cluster, right? This is when you ask, when you ask Kubernetes to run a container, you're talking to the control plane and the control plane takes it from there. Typically the control plane is talking to infrastructure. It's managing, it's running a set of controllers that are running a bit of compute, a bit of storage, a bit of networking, all tied to making sure your containers run and run well across the different environments. Kubernetes exposed a set of abstractions on top of this infrastructure. Things like pod and volume and ingress are now you know, pretty much uh, uh, standards, right? And they're self-service abstractions and exposed as APIs, right? And these APIs support an ecosystem of tooling, whether it's you know, GitOps or whether it's ClickOps or whether it's SDKs or tooling and you know, services that have been built on top of this, on top of this abstraction and API, right? This approach, when we started Crossplane five years ago, we bet on this approach. We bet on the fact that Kubernetes could be used for more than just container workloads. And so if you add Crossplane to a Kubernetes cluster, it does two things. One, it expands the horizon of your Kubernetes cluster. It's no longer just about containers. You're able to manage everything in the cloud, whether it's AI ML services or databases or networks or IM roles or really anything that is possible, uh, anything that's exposed by cloud services and resources are now manageable in the same way, using the same control plane approach, using the ecosystem of tooling that's been built around it. All of it is now done in the same way. And that's why we say it's standardizing you have a single path, a single approach for managing everything. The other part that Crossplane offers is it lets you create your own abstractions, just like pod and volume and ingress. You can create your own, my company's database or my company's cluster. All of those things are possible now with our composition engine. You can expose strongly typed, strongly versioned APIs as new abstractions, and you can define how you want those to map to the infrastructure and how your policies and business logic gets implemented. That's all done within the cross plane project and within the control plane that's running within your Kubernetes cluster. So that, you know, a really quick tour of, of cross plane. It's exciting to see, you know, in the five years, absolutely amazing to see how much growth has happened around cross plane. We're seeing companies from all different, you know, segments of the market, whether it's financial institutions or, you know, research companies or the cloud vendors or technology vendors and using Crossplane in ways that we never even thought of, right? We see companies building internal developer platforms. We see a lot of companies building AI and ML platforms on top of Crossplane, whether they're exposing, you know, clusters or databases or, uh, uh, accounts as a service internally for their teams to, to consume. We see customers building, you know, workload portability scenarios where they expose things that 
can run across different environments or creating a service catalog within, within Crossplane and exposing it to their teams internally or the customers, tenants. Um, and increasingly, we see more people doing things like, you know, uh, what we call cloud native infrastructure as code, taking, taking, you know, replacing some of their infrastructure as code investments with a control plane that enables more full automation and then a self-service API. Really, really exciting to see the adoption of Crossplane and really exciting to see the growth around it. If your company is actually using Crossplane and you're not on this list, on our list, please, please, it's really easy to actually just add your name to the list. It helps the project. It helps the growth of the project. Here's a QR code for doing that or just email us at, at steering at crossplane.io. And all this would not have been possible without the community around Crossplane. What an amazing community, friendly, helping, uh, there's, we counted 1,600 and something, you know, contributors to the Crossplane project, and we've just crossed 80,000 contributions to the project. What an exciting, exciting milestone for the project itself. If you're not part of our Slack community, please join. There is a lot of folks, promise everyone will be, uh, as, as Victor said, everyone will be behaved. Please join us. Uh, it's really easy to contribute. It's really easy to be part of the community. It's really easy to get going with it. Easiest way to do that, join the Slack for, for Crossplane. All right, so I was gonna talk about what's ahead for Crossplane. And we're gonna, I'm gonna start with one fundamental change we're making to the Crossplane project. So if you remember, Crossplane has a charter and the charter defines Crossplane as eff effectively the Crossplane runtime, the Crossplane resource model, the composition engine, the package manager, and now we're adding composition functions. What's in scope of the Crossplane project has been these components only. Very importantly, the providers for AWS and Google and G Google and Azure and all the cloud providers, things like composition functions, the tooling, the CLI, SDKs, et cetera, on Crossplane are out, have been out of scope of the Crossplane project. When we started Crossplane, our intention was to keep it as a small framework and ensure that you know, a healthy ecosystem can be built around it. And since then, we've gotten feedback that the lack of tooling and the lack of dev experience and the lack of language bindings and app bindings and the lack of convergence and rationalization of the providers and functions and everything else is hurting the adoption of Crossplane. And so as of this morning, the maintainers have voted and we have expanded the scope of the Crossplane project to now include tooling and dev experiences as well as the Crossplane providers and Crossplane functions. This is a very important step to take Crossplane to the next level. We're all excited about it. There's a PR on it this, that I believe was open this morning and a voting has, has, has is already in play. Um, so you'll see really exciting things in the Crossplane community going forward around tooling and interfaces and app bindings and language bindings that are coming, as well as a path to essentially start looking at converging providers and rationalizing providers and adding things that you know the community has been working on that can now be part of the Crossplane project. With the charter change, I have a second announcement. Upbound, the company that I'm a CEO of, is donating its Upjet project to the Crossplane community. So this is a, a set of code generation tooling that we at Upbound have created. And we use those to run our official providers for AWS and Azure and GCP and the family providers, breaking up provider into smaller, smaller service scoped providers and all the performance work that's happened. And these providers are solid and running in production. Upbound will be donating these to the Crossplane project. As part of the charter expansion, this enables the Crossplane community to now, under one roof, take these, pro take these providers and ensure that they're working correctly together and start on a path to converge them. All these discussions will happen in the Crossplane community as part of the Crossplane community meetings and 
and part of the governance of the crossplane project. This also removes any doubt around crossplane being a commercial project or being licensed and relicensed. And we're seeing a lot of activity in this in the community and in the industry. Um, we wanted to ensure that crossplane is can be used by everyone and everyone can depend on it for now and in the future. Just like Kubernetes, we think crossplane has a has a chance of being a, a standard for cloud aut automation and ensuring that people are building platforms on top of it. So please join us. I this we feel like there's a crossplane revolution happening right now, and it's a it's a natural progression from where we were as an industry with infrastructure as code. Please join us. It's really easy to, to be part of this community. It's really easy to start contributing. It's really easy to start adopting crossplane. Thank you, and have a wonderful crossplane day. Thank you, Basam.